at that time, because 10 years ago, uh, most of the China students, they don't know the third world impressively. Uh, so the Tsinghua University initiated a program on having countries for students, uh, for cult cultivating students to learn the other countries, like the uh, times in USA in the uh, World War, from the World War II. So at, at that time, it's some kind of the China strategy for the education and the China strategy for the uh, for the knowing the other world. So it's the it's the, the, the reason why I came to the PhD degree. So directly, uh, but this morning, uh, Dr. Indika asked for my master's or the bachelor's degree. As I said, unfortunately, I don't have a, I didn't, I don't have a uh, master's degree because in China, some of the top universities, we, we, talk, we, we uh, provide some uh, positions for the excellent students uh, for uh, pursuing the uh, PhD degree directly. Uh, strong through the P uh, master's degree. So it's um, similar to the USA's education. So it's in that kind of uh, sense, I, I come up with this, uh, and I came forward, I come through for this PhD uh, period. So in maybe two, two or three years ago, I uh, graduated and I obtained my PhD. And at that time, I, fortunately I met uh, uh, Cecilia, sir, and Professor Cecilia in 2019. Uh, at that time, I was uh, accompanied with our uh, university president, Campia, and I met uh, Professor Cecilia, and I invited Professor Cecilia to Beijing for the first uh, the first forum of the Arab studies. So I think uh, maybe I, I'm a little bit, maybe we can discuss later, because uh, uh, in China, there's an emerging subject calling for the air studies, but I think in Sri Lanka, maybe uh, there's no this kind of subject, maybe up right now. So uh, air studies, we, we, sometimes we call it country studies, some special country studies specifically. So as, as, uh, as for me, I am focusing on Sri Lanka and some of the other South Asian countries. Uh, yes, it's something like that. My colleagues, uh, they are, uh, so, so, they are focusing on different South Asia and something Europe, uh, Russia, Europe, so yeah, yeah, something else like that. So this is the institution and why I came here. Yes, this is the uh, interesting point I have to uh, describe and explain. Uh, so uh, today I want I would like to explain some of our uh, China's ethnic policies and governance. Here I changed the word because uh, I last week I sent the word to uh, the edition to Dr. Indica is another different because I think governance is representative of the another administrative and some kind of the uh, situation how the rules are going is going the rule is going in China so I think I changed the governance here and some experience from China to compare with the uh, Sri Lanka. I think it's an in interesting comparison studies with that. So uh, uh, here, uh, I think uh, I consist the topic consists of five parts. The first one is an overview of the research and the uh, policies, the status of what China is going on with ethnic problem or ethnic issues. The second one is the concept explanation and the uh, some of literature review on China's ethnic studies. So the third one is the uh, the four facets of the four factors of the China's ethnic policy. Uh, generalized one. It's not because in as a whole uh, the China's uh, ethnic policy is it, it concludes it includes different details generalized four points for that. Uh, the fourth one is chi uh, China's uh, ethnic uh, governance. It means that the uh, regional ethnic of autonomy to explain how this kind of mechanism works. 
and what influence or impacts the uh, autonomy on the people or ethnic groups. So the, the last one is uh, discussion and some experience and conclusions on the inclusion on our, this topic. Maybe I would like to uh, take 40 or 45 minutes for the, uh, uh, this uh, presentation and later we can discuss. All right, so, okay, let's to see these two pictures. Uh, the distribution of the, of the minorities in China. Uh, the left, part, left, left one is uh, for the distribution of the minorities. Uh, where the, uh, they are standing in and located in. Uh, we can see the Sizan, uh, Tibet. Actually, maybe I try to make a, a brief uh, explanation for the word Tibet and Sizan. Tibet, sometimes in 2023, last year, the foreign minister of China, Wang Yi, Mr. Wang Yi, said that the Tibet was a uh, colonial world originated from the British or something of the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, other, the other Western countries. So we would like to use the Xizhang, the Chinese pronunciation for that, excluding the Tibet, because the Tibet Lama, uh, Dalai Lama, is some kind of a political situation uh, concerning with that. We would like to call China's mainland in this part because Xizang, not Tibet, Tibet. Because in outside of Xizang autonomy, there are other Tibetan. So we would like to differentiate these two words between the part of Dalai Lama and the part of China officials, official uh, uh, something like that. So Xizang, we would like to prefer this this word. So uh, the west. The southwest part, the brown one is Xizang. The northeast, northwest part is Xinjiang, and the north part is Inner Mongolia. Yes. So uh, the south part, I from here. I am from here. Guangxi. This is Guangzhou, Hong Kong, Macau. Yeah. So the uh, Hainan, the, the weather is as similar as Sri Lanka. Yes. It's by, and I was born here, and. The, the biggest and the largest minority, John, was from here. You see the, the, the acres here is very large, but the population is very less. But the most minority, the largest minority was is here, located here. We call it Guangxi, Zhuang. Zhuang means some kind of the ethnic group. So uh, in the right side, uh, they are the different dialects from the uh, minorities. Uh, we can see the most of 60, 60%, 1.2% was is from the uh, Mandarin, we call it uh, the, the, the official language of China. And there are several dialects. Uh, and you see in the <laughs> we call Cantonese, Yuyun, yes, and the Zhuang is from the Guangxi, Zhuang, right? It's Tibetan and uh, Mongolian and other, uh, also a lot of, especially if you see the Fujian. Uh, previously, there is another Taiwanese here, but I, I see a little bit technology for PS Photoshop. <laughs> it's because it's some kind of, I, I'm wondering some of the, uh, because in China, you never see that as a uh, lecturer or assistant professor. When we are talking, uh, we are taking a lecture, some students or some other uh, uh, guys entering in the classroom, someone will take a picture, Photoshop, with something wrong with your slides. It's not kind of the, not, not a kind of political correctness. So I, I correct this one and we call it Ujianese, right? Milan, Ujianese is this. Taiwan and the Fujian province located okay, here. So this different dialect. Maybe uh, as far as I concerned, and I found that uh, the China in the when uh, established the state in uh, get the liberty from 1949, 
it's a very smart policy for the dividing. It's not like the British divided by the rule. It's Chinese edition. You know, the, the, as you know, the Cantonese here, we say the same language, but we divide it to two provinces, right here, you see, right here. But the Zhuang province is concluded to the Yunnan province. It divided different dialects people for different parts. Because when you say it, you are saying some the one the same language, maybe something it will be something wrong with the political uh, gathering. So I think the uh, uh, policymaker consider, uh, consider this kind of problem and divided different provinces with that. So it's interesting with these two maps. Uh, okay, so there's other view for the uh, full perspective of the, uh, 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 the, 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 the situation of China. So I just list a little bit for example for the population and they said uh, the more than 10 million people, they can, they, they, they consist of uh, four ethnic groups, Zhuang, Hui, Hui, Manzu, Hui Zhu, Manzu. So it means that the ethnics in China, so a uh, weaker located in Xinjiang, so the most popular and <laughs> some kind of big problem, I think, with the, from the Western countries uh, blaming China's uh, ethnic policies. And the religion, we have most of the Islam and the Zhang Buddhism uh, instead of uh, Tibet Buddhism. Because uh, I, I didn't mention the Mahayana, because it's not a it's, it's a majority Buddhism, so I, I didn't mention that. And then Telavada from the uh, South Park, Vietnam province, a little bit small group uh, uh, across the border of the Southeast Asian. So and the languages uh, with language and text and using Mandarin, that mark most of us are, we are considering. So uh, we can see the distribution cross border, something like the Korean, Russian, Kazakh in the northwestern part near the Xinjiang, and exclusive to the each province. So uh, it's the whole whole bigger of the China's ethnic uh, issues. So on that. Why we are still uh, need, why we need to study the uh, China ethnic issues. So it, I think it comes from three dimensions. The first one is it is sensitive. In China, when we are publishing or submitting some of articles, academic articles, if regarding to it, relate, it is related to the religion and ethics, it will be get much more checked. So it's hard to publish some articles in China for the Muslims and the ethnics, uh, referring to the Xinjiang province and Xizang province, is sensitive anymore. That is very, very much, pretty much. So the second one is since the incident March 14 in Lhasa, just prior to the Beijing Olympic Games, it was the uh, turmoil there. And the July 5th incident in Urumqi in 2009, there has been a new awareness of the importance of ethnic problem in China. So most of the academics and the uh, official, official hierarchies uh, from the central government, they are aware of that. So it's a big problem for the uh, uh, for the for the government. So according in according the uh, years of this information and the misunderstanding of the from the uh, United States and the Western countries. So it comes to a big problem for us. How to explain and how the China 
the local people and how the Western people or foreigners understanding the China's policy, ethnic policy. So it is a great problem. So it's time to set record straight and people learn the truth. So in these 10 years, uh, many of the China, uh, many of the scholars in China, they pretend to, uh, that they're intending to uh, write a lot of the realities and academic uh, books on explaining that. So uh, on, on the basis of these realities, we would like to learn how the ethnic problems we have to make the first explanation for the ethnic groups in China. You can see the figure in the right side, up in the up, up, upside, Mingdu University of China. Here was the Min Mingdu University in China. Mingdu University. It means we, we, we use the special Chinese pronunciation, the name of Chinese, Chinese Mandarin pronunciation because the ethnic university is not the exact name. The national university is another, it's not, it's not also the exact name. So we, can, we cannot use that correct name. We have to put the name to use. So here we have, we can see the two levels of the Chinese uh, ethnic contact, concept, means the one is the Chinese nation and the other one is the uh, 56 nationalities. The, the right side I will describe details later and we can see the left side, the Chinese nation. Uh, we can see the nation state and different of the most of the uh, Western scholars and US state scholars, they describe the nation, nation state in the ethnic uh, theoreticals. So we can see Chinese nation, what the Chinese nation mean? It's the nationalism of Chinese people. In this word, the Chinese nation, it means that the whole of the Chinese people, including different ethnic small uh, minorities, different ethnic groups. So we have the same ideology, we have the same uh, history from the from the uh, ancient times. So this one, we continue to the nation state. This is the first level. And the second level is the ethnic group. So we, we, can, we have the uh, Han, Zhang, Zhang means Tibet, Tibetan, right? The bigger and in the Mongolian nationalities. Uh, so this is the different meanings. So uh, let's con continue to the Minzu, the Chinese nation level. For example, in the past few years, we are close to the United States after the aircraft commission in the South China Sea in 1999. There's a big collision and um, event in the uh, foreign relations between the US and the uh, China. So some of the criticism on the China's national nationalism. And the other one is the boycott of the car for supermarkets, maybe in my uh, in the age of my middle, middle, middle school, maybe 30 years ago. Yes. So uh, and the other one is the Japanese, uh, the islands condition uh, and the uh, uh, the, the, the competence between the uh, border distribution, uh, the border limitation uh, between the Japan and China. So the islands, we call it how to pronounce in the Chinese, but in China we, we call it Diao Yidao. At these times, these two months, uh, we have some condition in the Philippines in the south uh, southeast China Sea. So this kind of the uh, uh, the benefits of China and the other countries. Some of nationality, nationalism came up to the Chinese people. So what did they do and what's the meaning of that Chinese nation? So this is the first explanation. And the second one is 56 nationalities level. So if there is narrow nationalism, nationalism among the Han Chinese, the Hans. It is called Greater Han Nationalism. 
if the ethnic minorities in certain regions put forward various demands concerning their own ethnicity, it is also called local nationalism by some people. So in that meaning, some of them were indeed political decisive, divisive, while most of them simply reflected statements with a clear national, national consciousness. So it's the totally different to aspect, right? So there is a confusion here. Maybe some of uh, students and, and 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 people they are confused. Why why this kind of Minzu and nationality and Chinese nation is kind of work come to China and attend to a Chinese text. So here's uh, some a brief history. So in the 1930s, Stalin identified nationalities in the uh, Russia and the Soviet Union, right? And published a lot of writings and articles on nationalities. In order to propagate Stalin's nationality theory to the West, the Marxist-Leninist Bureau of the USSR, also in China, we have, we had this kind of bureau, used the term nationality when translating the various nationalities of the Russians, Ukrainians, Kazakhs, and so on, from the Russian language into English. So after the liberation of China, this bureau translated Chinese nationalities into nationalities. So, but in reality, the international community uses the term nationality to refer the, to the, uh, they refer to that, uh, there is some, some, mistakes, some mistakes here, to ethnic groups, as ethnic nationalities in the passport. So when we are going outside, we have to uh, fill up some, of the entry uh, immigration card and some that that passport nationality means that which country are you from? So in China, in the context of China, in the uh, previous times we used the uh, uh, nationality it means ethnic groups. So it, it's interesting, a little bit chaos, a little bit uh, misunderstanding on this kind of work because. In China, in ancient from the ancient China times on, there's no kind of this this word ethnic groups. So it's a interesting point. Okay, so the nation state. What's the nation nation state? So after after the uh, 1911 outbreak of Xinhai Revolution, the Xinhai Revolution, which is the which was the uh, starting point of the uh, uh, the, the, the modern uh, contemporary the tem con contemporary or modern world. So in view of danger of the division of China. So yes, son, it means uh, the, uh, the huge guy to uh, separated China to the from the federalism of uh, times, uh, something uh, Qing dynasty from Qing dynasty, uh, revolutionist. So it's supposed to be proposing the establishment of nation state with the Chinese nation as the new unit of ethnicity. So this kind is uh, the Chinese nation, the word came from. So the later, the, the Chiang Kai-shek, it means that the, uh, from the time of 1911 to 1945, the Chiang Kai-shek government Forming part is something like that, the uh, UMP in Sri Lanka, maybe some of the kind of ideological parties. So they prefer to use the, the Chinese nation. This one is yes. uh, the Chinese nation, the word is some kind of representative, representative of the whole ideology of China, Chinese people. So this is the, 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 the word of China nation state. So ethnic groups. So the 56 ethnic groups, as all we, we all know, the uh, China has 56 ethnic groups, uh, including 55 minorities. So the China Chinese nation and the ethnic minorities are both called Minzu. Minzu, yes. A term that is used at two complete, com completely different levels of uh, meaning and which can 
easily be confused in terms of its notations. So if the 56 nationalities are replaced by 56 ethnic groups, then the levels and definitions of the Chinese nation and the 56 ethnic group will be clearer and less confusing. Yes, this is the, uh, uh, the, the, the much clear uh, concept making, right? Okay, so let's turn to the third part. What is the China's ethnic policy? Here I uh, grab, grasp four keywords for the policy. Equality, autonomy, development, and unity. Maybe uh, it's not, uh, uh, let's say, it's complementary to the, uh, the, the, the whole figure of the China's uh, ethnic policy, but it can be generally a little, a kind, some kind of generalized, right? You can understand through these four words. Okay, first one is equality. So uh, I think it's in, it's in, uh, it's similar, it's, it's the same in China. Uh, equality, we also in, in the constitution, we also, uh, refer to the three languages, Sinhala, uh, Tamar, English, right? So I think it's, it's the same as China too. Most of the minority people, minority minority group, they are pursuing the equality. So we can do that and think uh, clearly understanding what this word means. So. We can see in the bank note the Chinese currency. So I think I remember in rubies. Is it, is it the same in rubies? But in the different propaganda and road marks, we have three languages. I mean, like that, China also has this kind of uh, the, the, the respected minorities languages. We, we can see the uh, five languages. The English, the numbers, you know, it ping, pinging means the Chinese Mandarin, and the uh, the uh, Zhang, Tibetan, right? Mongolian, Uyghur, and Zhang languages. Zhang is the uh, largest group, right? So we have all these uh, four languages, five languages in this all of the currency. Are these right? considered national languages? Uh, which one? All the five. It's not. Mandarin is the national language. Mandarin is uh, only one official language. Yes, yes. yes. But we, 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 we respect for the, the minorities. You have 56 yes. minorities. Huh? You have 56 minorities. But it's five, it's, it's five languages or four languages. It's the most, the most I think, as I, uh, I mentioned before, there are four or five languages, the biggest language you see, right? Yeah. Drum, Uyghur, Mongol, right? Yes, they have the uh, language and text words. Yes, some of the, most of uh, the minorities don't have. Yes. Okay. All right, so the autonomy, the second one is the autonomy. I think, but, uh, because I am actually, to be honest, I, I am not an, uh, expert on the uh, ethnic studies, so, so I, I need to learn from Professor Cecilia. So the autonomy, the autonomous uh, the situation in Sri Lanka, maybe the LTTE and before, the, the Tamil people, they pursue for this kind of situation, but fell, right? But in China, in from the 1949, we give this power to the regions, the different five regions. So we call it the regional ethnic autonomy, autonomous uh, autonomy, right? Five, there are five autonomies. Xinjiang, Xizang, Xizang means Tibet, uh, Inner Mongolia, Guangxi, Maintang, and the Ningxia, uh, some of the Muslims from the Muslim Wei, Wei Zhu, right? So it's five parts. 
you can see, correct? So the third one is the development. So uh, after giving the power and right to the autonomy, what can we do? What can the China central government do for the, the uh, for the local people? So the uh, in the uh, principle uh, and the policies from that time, they are cons they were concerned about the. Uh, the healthy people, how to, how how the healthy people to provide help to the autonomous autonomy, because in the the situation economic situation in among the autonomies, they were not as good as the other provinces. So the development this work can be of great important, right? So. The, for example, in the last more than 30 years, the government depart, departments and other localities across the country have been providing a pair of assistance to Xinjiang and Sudan. So uh, now my home, my, my home is set in Shenzhen, Guangdong, Guangdong province, Cantonese, yeah, Guangdong is the, the most developed province in China. And especially for the industry and the uh, the the the, 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 the uh, so the Shenzhen city is the fourth largest city in China, and its uh, capability of economic growth is similar to the the, the the region to the five rich autonomies. So they constructed and created some bounded up and some counterparts as the assistance. So the, the, the east part, east, eastern province connected with the western provinces. They get connected. So this kind of wealthy transfer, uh, wealth transfer would be better for the development of the, the autonomy, uh, uh, ethnic autonomies. So this is the uh, development situation. And the fourth one, is the unity. So some of the uh, people, especially these 10 years and five, the uh, weaker this program. Maybe we can read some news on the weakers program and the terrorist and East to how say uh, to East to Peter is is not Turkish Turkish. Some east eastern the, the terrorist group, the terrorist group in the eastern was is from the Islam. ISIS. It's not ISIS. It's so many you put in, but you didn't do. Yes, maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's it's okay from the middle uh, middle Asia. So the unity means that uh, we have. Different, we conclude and we conclusive for the we are conclusive for the different religions and the uh, people's regist uh, register uh, the religious activities in China. So this unity it means that uh, uh, we are con conclusive, right? So I think it's in this figure we can uh, see the. How the uh, theoretical, how the theories connected with the policies. In the upside was is the uh, uh, the chairman from uh, all the parties leader leaders from the Mao Zedong chairman, right? Uh, the second generation is Deng Xiaoping, the third generation Jiang Zemin and Wu and Xi Jinping uh, up to right now. They created the uh, think tanks. Most of the think tanks help them to create it. this kind, uh, the, this different uh, theories on how to uh, create uh, the narratives of ethnic policies, right? So the two fundamental questions is uh, they are what is Minzu and what is ethnic problems in China. The, the other one is the core questions, how to promote 
the development in the autonomies and how to coordinate the relations between different uh, ethnic groups. So these two questions consist of uh, and across influence and impacts each other in this gray zone, right? So how the uh, ethnic theories impact the ethnic policies in the gray zone, they are maybe some kind of uh, uh, complicated to dis describe the, uh, the theories impacts on the uh, like equality, autonomy, development, and unity. So these four keywords was uh, they were uh, originated from these theories. So uh, in this model, we can see the uh, the main we can see the main path from the up to the, to the down, right? From up to down. So this is the uh, policy making and the uh, situation, contemporary situation, position and policy making situation in China. So uh, maybe it's a little bit uh, uh, clearer, but complicated one you, you can we can see it in different details, different different native narratives, right? Okay, so in how, how what was the progress and how the central government administrate the localities, especially for the uh, ethnic food zones, right? In the constitution, we can see that all areas inhabited by ethnic minorities shall protect regional autonomy. Establish, establish autonomous organs and exercise the power to self govern. Right? Self govern. So uh, maybe I, I think when I was in USA in two, 2016, most of the scholars and uh, students they asked me, what's the democratic situation in China? So most of people concerned about concerned about that, right? Uh, to be frankly, uh, how to say it's, it's not easy to define what what what's the situation between the uh, totalism and the freedom, right? It's in the mix, in the middle. So, uh, but one of our uh, uh, deputy ambassador in uh, USA from China's China government uh, in the closed door meeting, he. He told he told to the scholars, frankly, he has uh, he admitted that the China is some kind of to some extent is an author, uh, authoritarian regime, some kind of that, because uh, maybe the same the center lead government controls all of the resources and the and the and the and the policy making, so it's efficient as some kind of the freedom and the maybe uh, the, the 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 flexibility is in, not enough. So I, I I don't want to say much about that because it's a little bit sensitive in in, in China in the Chinese narrative uh, official narrative. So for this constitution and. What's the mechanism of the regional ethnic economy? So the first bigger feature is state directed autonomy, right? So a form of the autonomy under the unified leadership of the state and all ethnic autonomous areas are an inseparable part of China. The national autonomous organs are different levels of local power under the leadership of the central government. They all must obey the unified leadership of the central government. So it's state directed nature. It's a strong, right? Relative strong. So prevent reflecting more of the will of the state and its wishes. So this autonomy system is some kind of the uh, reflects the wish of the state. It means that uh, most of the policy come to the autonomy we have we have to comp uh, comply with right so 
The second is the top-down and centrally led system in the is autonomy, state directed. This is the state directed autonomy uh, uh, explanation. Another is the in reinforcing the affiliation of the borders area to the central autonomies. Because in the ancient times in the history, uh, there's one sentence called the uh, emperor was in the capital of the China. But in the border, uh, in the border areas, we cannot control and it's far from the uh, ruling mountains and rivers. So it's hard to control and the, in that time the information is not, uh, it's not efficiently, right, to get, to get the information. So it's very, it's a very difficult thing. So the state directed autonomy, it, means that they control the or administrate the border areas, right? Okay, the second one is the combination of the ethnic and regional factors. So the ethnic and regional factors, what they, what, 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 what they mean? What meaning, right? They are related and subordinate. And neither can be the decisive factor in the system of autonomy on its own, right? It is not simply ethnic economy, but and and are, are not ethnic ethnic sized and local economies, right? It's not simply territorial autonomy either, right? It cannot this kind these two words, each one cannot survive or cannot be focused only in, in the one side. They are combined, right? The third one is the relationship between the central and the local governments in general. So only that the state assumes more responsibility for the development of the region, a regional ethnic autonomous units, and they provide them with special support. Yes, so we can see the, the features, right? Okay, we can see in this picture a strong ethnic groups. Uh, we can uh, get some policy free and policy self-governed from the state and from the central central government. Uh, this is, is the establishment of the public parties. In this year, the drums, uh, drum ethnic groups, public holidays is set from April 12 to April 15. Is similar to the Sri Lankan New Year, right? So we call it the, it's some kind of the, uh, normally in China, we said the uh, public holidays from the central government, but only Guangxi, only the Duong ethnic groups has its own public holidays in the autonomous, in the autonomy. So it's very interesting. So, okay. The third one is the political and economic factors. So the institutional logic of the uh, regional ethnic autonomy is the uh, some kind of a is to some extent as a support of the for the promotion of economic construction, right? So uh, in the level of the actual uh, operation, regional ethnic autonomy is more of an economic system than a political system. It means that the development, the world of, in terms of the development, this kind of system is the it, 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 it acts the most important role, right? Then the, uh, rather than the political uh, power, right? So we can see in the second paragraph, the central government provides more economic incentives to ethnic autonomous areas. So including the fiscal tax and uh, the uh, uh, financial transfers, something like that. Uh, when I uh, came in, uh, before I came in abroad, I came to Sri Lanka um, in last year in December, one of our another, the, the, the University of the Central Parties, the 
China Communist Political Party, the the president. So gave a lecture to us. Uh, he said that the most average of the incomes, the largest one, is not from Shanghai, not from Beijing, it's from Xi'an, the bad, because a lot of the financial transfers from the central government to Xi'an, right? They are, they are they, the minority, they are the people, the population is very rare. So they obtained and got a lot of the transfers, right? So per capita. So it's in, an interesting phenomenon. All right, so the, 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 the community, so the part of assistance we mentioned before, so the, from the uh, developed cities and the uh, develop, developing the developing cities. When I was in uh, the first the first visiting to uh, Xizang in 2018, at that time I was finished my uh, uh, visiting years uh, in the University of Colorado. I, I went to the, uh, the, the China South Asian Union, the academic union. It was held in the Xizang. That's very beautiful. And uh, when I, I I rent a car here and visit different places, when I need to get a pet, uh, petrol uh, oil, we have to show my ID card. Everyone, yes. Otherwise, we cannot get the petrol. Get it right. So it's um, it's a petrol station. So it's um. Another kind of situation for the state, right? Okay, so the, the fourth one is the pre uh, preferential policies for the grounds uh, groups based on the ethnic identities. So, in conjunction with the policy of regional ethnic autonomy, the state provides ethnic minorities with preferential policies in many areas of social life, especially establishing a direct link between ethnic minorities' identity and preferential treatment. So the uh, autonomy units themselves, that's the main beneficiaries. On the other hand, by the individual members of the ethnic minority groups, as also as the main beneficiaries. So uh, most of the uh, areas, minority areas, minority areas that provide them with greater opportunities. Right. Okay. So it's the uh, the four points for the uh, beneficiaries and the uh, advantages of the uh, ethnic autonomy. Autonomy. So the second, the second, we let's come turn to the challenges for the regional ethnic autonomy. So this uh, there are four points. I I I I, I, I sub, made, made a summary. The first one is the institutional function, and maybe some, to some extent it's limited in practice because uh, the, uh, we, despite the high legal position of the citizen, because this kind of the regional ethnic autonomy, uh, it is uh, three most important uh, state institu institution uh, system, uh, political system. The first one is the uh, China National Congress. The second one is the uh, the, 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 the uh, number of uh, the legislature, right? The third one is the regional ethnic autonomy. So in 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 this point, the institution function is some kind of limited. The second one is the exercise of the right is not sufficiently normal. How to say that? For example, the uh, regional autonomy is intended to fully reflect and take uh, the rights of all ethnic minorities to manage the internal affairs of their own ethnic groups. The organ of the autonomy is the local government, whose authority is exercised by the local population as a whole, not just by the autonomous ethnic groups, and the affairs it manages cannot be exposed exclusively the internal affairs of their own ethnic groups. So this is the second one. So the third one is institutional tension between the uh, autonomy and the centralization, right? So uh, 
as we discussed before and previously, the autonomy is a decentralized system, not only inherently conflicts with the party's monolithic leadership system, but also conflicts with the administrative model of decentralization between the center and the localities. So both of them are manifested in the fact that the autonomous localities must submit to the central government's policies and guidelines. So this is the tension between this the up and the down, right? So the fourth one is the urbanization challenge from the urbanization and population flows in the from the uh, regional ethnic autonomies. Uh, right. So uh, typically, uh, typically the example from the uh, Yanbian Korean Autonomous. So uh, it, it's located in the northeastern China. So it's, uh, it's near the border of the North Korea and South Korea, right? Uh, the island, the peninsula, the Korean peninsula. So which has now become an empty nested rural village as a result of the large-scale migration of ethnic Koreans after the establishment of diplomatic relations between China and the Republic of Korea in 1992. So while, but in China, in Qingdao and other places, the new urban settlements of ethnic Koreans have emerged. So this is the urbanization and the uh, uh, rural population flows from the uh, ethnic minorities. So this is the four uh, challenges for the govern ethnic minority govern governance system. So uh, all in all, we concluded the four facts. Four uh, facts. We can see that the, the China's ethnic contact. We have concluded the the, the topic today. So. We have shown the three points for, for, for us uh, to discuss. The first one is the China's ethnic concept stresses more on the owners of the Chinese nation. It means uh, uh, instead of the uh, specific specific ethnic group, right? So the whole ideology is more than, more important than the uh, small one, small minority one, right? The second one is the China's ethnic policy. Policy is rooted in the country's unique history and culture, and has its own development project. Maybe it's uh, some of the specialized from the uh, uh, China's history, right? Some, uh, I think it's it's the same to the Sri Lanka. Maybe we can make some uh, 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 thinking about the, uh, the situation. Uh, from the history of Sri Lanka. And the third one is the distinctive feature and the ethnic and regional center, right? The uh, state center more than the uh, autonomies, right? Comprehensive pre preferential policies from the uh, uh, state uh, level and the upside and the center, center level, right? So the this about regional ethnic autonomy is a link between the state and the society, the history and the reality, right? So I think it's the uh, experience from the China's perspective. We can see uh, maybe uh, some uh, realities and some practices, what China do, what China has been done for the uh, minority policies, right? So may, let's come to the next progress for the discussion and um, so I, I need to hear some of the uh, reflections from the from you and thinking about that. Uh, uh, to be frankly, actually, I, uh, I, I figure this uh, vision out because only one on, in one week because last week Dr. Indika asked me to, to do that. Because I, 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 as I talked with uh, Professor Cecilia, I, I, I prefer to do this research for after the new year, Sri Lanka new year. But I think it's uh, some kind of outlines and uh, generalized figure out the 
uh, China's policies, and it's I think it's not not so comprehensive, but it's uh, how to say the 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 the, the, the outlines can be grasped. Right. So thank you so much for your hearing some opinions from you. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Ben, and thanks so much for taking this up for and doing this outline for one week, and we appreciate that very much. Um...